Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Misty Moss. I am a boudoir photographer, self-portrait artist, and burlesque performer, all things self-love. And today we are here to talk about our internet overlords, mostly primarily Instagram and whether or not Instagram is dead for boudoir photographers in 2023. <coughs> if you are here, I am going to guess that you are a boudoir photographer and you have probably seen this message on your Instagram sometime recently, or you are just a boudoir photographer struggling to find growth and engagement on Instagram and wondering, is this really worth it? Should I be spending all my time doing this? Why do I feel like I'm hitting my head against the wall? Why is this so hard? Why does this suck so much? Why does everybody hate me on the internet? If that sounds like you, welcome to this video. You are in the right place. In this video, we are going to talk about using Instagram as a boudoir photographer. We are going to commiserate a little bit together because how can we not right now trying to exist on the internet? And I'm gonna give you some hot tips on how to market, how to use social media, how to find joy and fulfillment in your social media strategy without selling your soul to Instagram. Before we dive into this video, please subscribe, like, hit that bell so you get more notifications on videos like this, and let's Dive into this video, let's go! Listen, come close, come close. Instagram is sadly dying for boudoir photographers, at least in the way they were used to using it. They are cracking down more and more on content. They have community guidelines, and now they also have recommendation guidelines. What do you mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? So you can post content that doesn't go against the community guidelines, but Instagram can still say, mm, no, I don't like you, and not show your content to non-followers which is like kind of the point of social media is that we can grow our audiences and find potential clients and connect and nurture that audience and grow our brands. But Instagram says, no, you're not allowed. So you can post something. It doesn't go against the community guidelines, but it will never, ever, 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 ever be seen. No bother. Double bother. So Instagram won't recommend our accounts to new followers. They delete our content or they flag our content. Hey, maybe they even delete your account without any warning. And yes, that happened to me about two years ago. I woke up one morning, I went to go check my Instagram account and it was gone, just gone. 16,000 followers and years and years and years of hard work. Lots of friends existed on the account, people that I like to talk to and connect with, just poof, gone because Instagram decided, nope, not allowed. Not so for you. Even though I didn't have any content that had gone against their community guidelines, it still was just gone. And yeah, it sucked quite a bit, however, it actually didn't impact my business nearly as much as I fretted that it would because I don't put all of my eggs into one social media basket and I have a multi-tiered social media plan so that if, when, this happens again, I'm prepared and I still have an audience to talk to, an audience to engage with, and a community out there. Having my account deleted by Instagram really taught me that this platform does not have our best interests in heart. They really don't incentivize creators at all. Um, if you are an American on TikTok, I feel like you probably know that they incentivize creators there. They have the creator fund. I don't know what it's called. I'm not on TikTok, can you tell? Um, but they pay creators to make content. YouTube pays creators to make content. And it's a really like, give and take system that these platforms have. Instagram does like the opposite. It's mine. You Understand? Mine! Oh mine! Get back in there! It doesn't incentivize creators at all, and in fact it just bans them and blocks them and really just like shoves them under the rug, really showing that the only people whose interests they have at heart are their shareholders, and they're only out there to make a buck. So, knowing that, how do we use this platform in a way that works for us? We know that our content isn't being recommended to non-followers, and we know that showing up on Instagram is really draining, deflating, and it is hard work. 
So we need to pivot while we are on Instagram. We need to think of the existing audience that we may already have and how we can nurture that audience and grow excitement and engagement in an organic way. Basically, we gotta put the social back in social media. Okay. I know I'm not growing my audience when I show up on Instagram. I know that when I go and I make a post, the only people that are seeing it are like 1% of the people that already follow me and nobody knew. So when I'm showing up on Instagram, I'm trying to keep that in mind and I'm trying to make content that showcases some education, some inspiration, or just some connection between my audience members to get them engaged and excited about the stuff I'm posting about. Ideally, I would like them to be so excited about the content I'm posting that they share it to their followers and then I get to be in front of non-followers despite all of Instagram's worst intentions. Hello! So I do this by really focusing on posting carousels. And I know carousels are like, wow, that's so 2020, <laughs> but they do work sometimes. Um, and also posting reels because video content is really king on Instagram and we know this. Um, and it's a really good way to hopefully be seen by people other than your followers on Instagram. So by posting carousels and reels on Instagram, I'm able to share more educational content, more inspirational content, and more shareable content that's gonna get people to put it on their stories so that Instagram may not be recommending me, but my followers are. So keeping that in mind and thinking of how you can be of value and of service to your community, so much so that they wanna shout it out to the rooftops on the internet. Well, we are sitting here and talking about how hard it is to even be seen on Instagram and to even be heard by 1%, 2% of the existing followers that you have. I know this may seem really frustrating and really daunting, and it is. Sadly, it just is. I have had quite a few people reach out to me lately in my Instagram DMs and ask me, how are you getting away with it? How are you avoiding the shadow ban? How are you getting new followers? And I've had so many DMs lately about this topic that I was like, I should really make a video about this because I have a lot of thoughts about it and hopefully some knowledge and some tidbits to share with you as well. And Sadly, the baseline to this is I'm not getting away with it. Instagram has me shadow banned for at least two years. Probably as soon as I started my new account, I have been shadow banned. But as I was saying before, having my account deleted had given me some new insight into how to use Instagram. So I have a lot less stock in it and a lot less emotional attachment to this platform than I used to. So while I feel, I feel your frustration with Instagram when everybody messages me asking about it, just know that this platform doesn't have our best interest at heart and it's time to go back to the drawing board. When this happens, when a social media platform tries to kick us out and tries to just get rid of part of its community, it's time to go back to basics and recalibrate and just recalibrate your whole social media marketing plan. So we are going back to basics. Instagram doesn't want us there, so who does? We also need to remember that social media is steroids for your business. It is not essential, it is not mandatory. You can definitely run a business without social media. Yes, it will probably be harder, but social media essentially is just helping you grow muscle mass followers really, really fast. The muscles. But that type of like really, really fast growth and connections doesn't always equal the most valuable and the best return and connections with potential clients. Businesses are running along just fine before social media came and the invention of the internet. So we might have to think a little bit harder and put in a little bit more elbow work, but it is possible and it's definitely possible to exist without Instagram. Even though they would like us to think otherwise. So when you feel stuck in a rut and you are just spinning your wheels, hating your life on the internet, hating engaging on social media, it's time to go back to the drawing board and I want you to ask yourself, three important questions that are gonna help you on your road forward. I want you to go back to the very beginning when you started your business. I want you to think, where is my ideal client hanging out? Maybe you haven't even thought about your ideal client lately. I know once we get our businesses started and we're kind of working on them, things kind of just like 
become a self-sustaining machine and you're just running forward. We don't think a lot about what we had to think about at the very, very beginning when we were starting this all out, but it's time to go back back to basics, baby, and think about who is your ideal client and where are they hanging out? Where can you find them? That's not Instagram. And then I want you to ask yourself number two, how do you like showing up? Not where, but how do you like showing up? Do you like showing up on Instagram and just posting a photo that nobody sees and nobody engages with? Does that fulfill you? Does that feel good? Or do you like posting stuff on stories that people reply to and they get really excited and it starts a conversation? Do you like posting just photo content or do you like making video content? How you like showing up is gonna be really important to figuring out where you wanna show up, which leads us to question three, which is where do you want to be? Where do you want to be spending your time, engaging with your audience and making connections? Ideally, where you show up is gonna be a combination of question one and two. It's gonna be somewhere that allows you to show up in the way that you like to show up and also allows you to show up where your ideal client is hanging out. So I really like to make long form content. I learned this about myself in the pandemic. I love making videos like this that starts conversation. So lately I've been putting a lot of my eggs in YouTube. I also like making photo content, but I also want my content to perform well and not just like fall into an abyss and be able to give back to me for a really, really long time. So I have been showing up a lot on Pinterest and YouTube because I don't know about you guys, but showing up on a platform that doesn't really facilitate my growth and isn't excited about me being there doesn't make me excited to be there. And while Instagram is lovely and I do have a lot of friends there and I do like to use it as like a messaging platform and just a way to stay connected with the people that I've already established a connection with, it doesn't feel good to be there to try to grow and to try to reach new people. So I am pivoting Pivot. and I'm deciding Screw you, Instagram. I am gonna spend my time somewhere that feels better for me, where my ideal client is hanging out. Which leads me to my next section of this video, which is evergreen marketing. So Instagram and TikTok are very much focused on the social media aspect. They are a scroll and reward type of platform, which means the content you post lives for a couple hours, maybe a couple days before it kind of just dies and collects dust in the archives. Pinterest, however, is a search engine, which means you post things and you optimize them for the search engine and they remain findable and searchable for months or years. This is incredible. This is game changing. This is great because it means you post something, you spend a lot of time on something, it just doesn't die tomorrow. It becomes part of the, it becomes part of the library that remains searchable for years months, however long. I recently just had a pin blow up from like two years ago. Nice. And I was like, what, who's searching for this? But because it's just on Pinterest, people are able to search it and it just pops up for them and then it just blew up. It was amazing. I didn't have to do any work except for posting it two years ago. I recently decided to look up my analytics for Instagram versus Pinterest because I was really curious. So here are my analytics for Instagram. On Instagram, I have about 11.3 thousand followers, 11. Why is that so hard to say? Hi, Super Nintendo Chalmers. 11,300 followers on Instagram. I show up on Instagram almost every day religiously. I am either posting a photo, posting a carousel, posting a reel, or posting on short stories. But I am there a lot. I am constantly engaging and I am part of the community. And these, this is my engagement. This is it make you want to cry a little bit. However, this is my engagement on Pinterest. I have less than 300 subscribers on Pinterest. I show up basically never. I just like post a few things a week, comment a couple things here and there willy nilly, but it's being seen by over 100,000 people. I have 300 followers versus this. I've spent blood, sweat and tears cultivating my Instagram account and it gives me this. If this doesn't say the story of how Instagram appreciates its creators, then I don't know what will. The math just isn't mathing for Instagram and evergreen is the place to be spending your time. I also realized I'm just throwing around the word evergreen marketing and you might not know what that means. Whoop de doo what does it all mean, Basil? Evergreen essentially just means stuff you post that's gonna return forever. It's evergreen. It's always gonna be relevant. It's always gonna be searchable. So Pinterest and YouTube are two examples of evergreen content. Go evergreen. And hey, 
while you're here. While we're talking about analytics, only 33% of the people subscribed to my channel watch my videos. So if you're part of the 66% not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, like this channel, follow along for great more content. That would be awesome. Thanks. I love the Boudoir album. I have worked with them for a year now. I love the quality of their products. I love their professionalism. Their albums are absolutely stunning. Their quality is beautiful. The colors are incredible. But my favorite part about this company is their amazing team. They have an all-female staff that works with their albums and they are so supportive of our Boudoir community unlike I've ever seen before. The Boudoir album is constantly sponsoring workshops, sponsoring educators to foster growth and community within the Boudoir community. And it's an absolutely beautiful thing to be a part of and to witness, so I am so grateful for them. They paid for my venue in LA when I taught a workshop there, and I was like, I'll throw you guys into my YouTube channel as a thank you. But honestly, they did it just because they wanted to facilitate growth and have a workshop. They didn't even want this out of me. I was just like, I love you guys so much. I need to talk about you to the internet so that they also fall in love with you. So if you are a boudoir photographer looking for an album company that has sensational quality to give to your clients, I cannot recommend the boudoir album enough. All right, so. We're talking about evergreen content. We're talking about search engine optimization. We're talking about ways that you can remain relevant with your content and get back for the giving that you're doing to the internet. <laughs> that didn't make sense. I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna fix how I said that. We're just gonna roll with it. Look at all those chickens. An incredibly powerful tool that is incredibly underutilized in the community is your own website. Your own website is probably the biggest thing that you can work on to see almost an instant return. When I mentor other photographers, the number one thing I notice and the number one thing I like to spend time on them with is just a lack of website finessing. So your website is your 24 seven marketing assistant. It is constantly selling your product to any client that just goes onto your website. It can even book your clients on your website if you have it set up properly. So having your SEO down pat for your website is absolutely key to your marketing plan. Google will be scrolling your website and recommending you to people who search relevant keywords to you in their little Google search bar. So if you can get to the top of your area in your own like keyword search, so your area boudoir photographer, that's game changing. Like forget about Instagram, get out of here. Get out. Google is the place where you really wanna be spending your time and prioritizing your energy. You can do search engine optimization on your own. It does want to make your eyes bleed a little bit. I hired somebody to do it and I definitely recommend it if tech is not like your thing, you don't love that, it makes your head hurt a little bit. It's very great to have somebody just go through and kind of finesse your website so that it's searchable and it becomes the top of your area. I would say 60% of my clients find me on Google at this point. So Google and word of mouth are just so underutilized. So get that SEO locked down for your website. You will not regret it. Take all that time you're spending on Instagram crying, put it onto your website and make your website work for you. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Okay, I just felt I needed to like spin and get the jimmies out because we've been talking for a while, you know? I've been talking about this for a long time. Okay, I got one more big thing I wanna chat with you guys about and that is email marketing is not dead. It will probably never die. And it's also the one list of followers that can never be taken from you. So Instagram, we know, is out there just deleting people willy-nilly, whatever it feels like. I can't even count the amount of friends that I know that have lost their accounts. It's a lot. A lot of us are just getting deleted out there. Facebook, same thing. Heck, even Google is starting to delete people's my business profiles if it doesn't like perfectly fit within their parameters. So your email newsletter list is that one list that you 
get to keep. That's yours. You have that on your hard drive and nobody's coming to take that away from you. So growing your email newsletter list is paramount. It's also the one way of marketing. When people open an email from you, you're not competing for their attention from a scroll, from a swipe, from whatever's happening. When they're reading an email that was in their inbox with your name on it and they clicked it and they're listening to you and there's no other noise. And that's incredible. In this day and age, how often is it that somebody's just sitting there deciding to be there listening to what you have to say that doesn't happen on social media somebody's just scrolling by so fast they might just scroll right past whatever you had to post they didn't even see it but on email they're there for you and that's amazing you can also use your evergreen content and your website to foster your email newsletter list so you can make a beautiful freebie just something that nurtures your community and gives some value to them for free throw it up on Pinterest in a cute little picture where people have to go and sign up or throw it on your website as a little pop-up where they can download this freebie and you just get their little email and now you get to grow your email list. I would say my email list is probably one of the best conversion tools that I have and I think it is a very underutilized tool in this industry as well. So get your evergreen marketing down, convert to Pinterest babies, get your website down pat, make a newsletter list and Instagram, who are you? We don't need you, get out of here. All right, you have been with me for a long time through this video and I am so grateful for you listening to me. Thank you so much for being here. I could talk about this topic forever. We've had to pivot a lot in this industry and this is just one more time we have to pivot and to think about how we show up on social media and where we can show up on social media. If you want more tools and more places to show up on social media that are not Instagram, that are not you selling your soul to the Instagram devil, then I have made a PDF for you it's totally free down in the description you can go and download it I just realized that this video would be way too long if I talked about all of the things I wanted to talk about and if I told you about all of the ways you can market I was like I'll be here all day I'll be here forever this video will be way too long for YouTube I'm tired of this grandpa that's too damn bad so I just made it into a cute little PDF for you you can go get it and then you can implement those into your business so you can stop relying on Instagram and stop feeling like you're just hitting your head against the proverbial Instagram wall of isolation and quietness and shadow ban land. Because it's just not fun there. We don't like it. We want to be bringing joy, fulfillment, excitement into our social media strategy and be showing up in ways that feel good for us because that's going to feel good for our audience. So. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to this video. And I hope and wish you all the best on Instagram, on social media. Have fun out there, kids. Goodbye. How do we use this platform in a way that works for us? Well, let me tell ya. What else can I do? It's like, okay, so we have like a little Instagram logo and I'll just be like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>